I was bit by a tick when I was seven years old and not diagnosed until I was 19 years old. I went through a lot of my childhood with severe pain, both physical and emotional. Most of it started in my knees um, when I was seven years old and it grew on to strep throats, severe fatigue. The pain moved up into my hips and into my neck. I had migraines. I wasn't able to get out of bed. And then it became more neurological and my ability to focus and read and retain information was lacking and decreasing at a rapid speed that no one could understand. There were little things happening and no one really knew why. I was sent to a lot of doctors and specialists. Some people said it was rheumatoid arthritis. Some people said it was multiple sclerosis. Some people said it was fibromyalgia. Some people said it was anxiety disorder. Some people said it was learning disability and I needed to take antidepressants and exercise more. So it was very confusing. So I just went along with my life and didn't think anything of it. I just kept, I worked, I was working as a teenager. I just had to fight through it and I would cry myself to sleep at night. Um, and you know, smoked marijuana for sure because it helped with all the symptoms of in increased nausea and joint pain. But of course, smoking weed on top of being sick doesn't make you better. So it was, it was a very difficult journey to get through. I was about to turn 19 years old and I experienced a severe mental breakdown. I had a complete psychotic episode for about two months and my parents did not know what to do. They didn't know how to help me. So my father was so scared and so lost and so um, out of choices of how to help me that he decided that putting me into a mental institution and re rehabilitation center would be the answer. So he was forced to drug and sedate me and put me into an ambulance and I woke up in a psychiatric ward. At that place I met a doctor, Dr. Ellen Shander, and she saw right through me and she said, you're going to be okay and I'm going to get you out of here and I know you're not crazy and it's going to be okay. And the feeling of relief was pretty unbelievable. I, I thought I was in a dream yet again. I felt very confused because even after no marijuana or anything like that, I was still experiencing severe memory loss, night sweats at this point, headaches, uh, the inability to make decisions, joint pain, uh, extreme fatigue, and confusion. So I explained this to the doctor and she said, well, have you ever been tested for Lyme disease? It sounds like Lyme. I said, oh, no, no, no. They, they've tested me for that a while ago. I've actually had a few tests. They thought it might have been multiple sclerosis and probably fibromyalgia. And she said, well, you know that 50% of the tests in America are inaccurate. And I said, no, I didn't, I didn't know that. So she sent me to another doctor and he took an array of tests and blood and came back with not only like off the charts Lyme disease, but also Bibesia, which is very similar to malaria. Dr. Shander was well versed enough in Lyme. Uh, she had a lot of patients with Lyme disease as it was, and so she knew how to recognize it. And now as she's developed in her practice, she also integrates um, essential oil healing. So I, I think she might be the first of her kind actually to do that, but she had so many patients who were suffering with Lyme and were in her office because they were depressed or anxiety ridden, et cetera, that she knew what to, she, she put the dots together. Now I'm, I'm talking to a lot of fellow Lyme sufferers and trying to spread awareness because this country does not understand what Lyme disease is or what it looks like because you look normal on the outside. You don't look like, you know, somebody who has AIDS or cancer. Sometimes you kind of wish that you did. It sounds horrible. I mean, I can say that because then people wouldn't say, oh, you're fine, you just buck up, you don't look sick. And it's very frustrating because you're trapped in a body that's unable to function, yet, you know, there are points where you can muster up some strength. And when you come back home and you're behind closed doors, you're just a crumbling mess. And I, I experienced that for most of my life. And now I'm just not going to hide it anymore.